Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? Um, I've tried to record this like three times, right? Well, so we'll see if this is uh, this is gonna work. So, um, the last couple of days have been kind of crazy. Uh, Jerome Powell has been uh, at Capitol Hill uh, uh, testifying in front of Congress, um, answering a bunch of questions, and all the senators and uh, congressmen and all these politicians uh, have a certain amount of time to asking some questions and basically to ream them. And so, uh, and it's been, uh, it's, it's sent, it's been sending the markets into like a really volatile, uh, uh, movement, right? Up and down, up and down. Uh, although yesterday we had a defined down day. Uh, and so, uh, I just wanted to, uh, maybe kind of shed light on some of the things that were said and maybe uh, bring some clarity to it. Uh, there was one particular line of question that kind of bothered me. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to uh, talk about it. Um, and so, yeah, so we'll just kind of talk about some of these things. I'll uh, just do it really quick and then uh, hopefully bring some, yeah, uh, bring some clarity and maybe uh, answer some questions that you guys might have. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this video right here. Uh, this is uh, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, she's a senator from Massachusetts, and uh, she is uh, she's a woman of the people. Uh, so she is a, she is a pretty hardcore Democrat, um, super liberal. Um, she does not mind uh, spending government money at all, and she does not mind taxing the crap out of the rich. And so uh, she had an opportunity to talk to uh, Powell yesterday, and. Uh, let's kind of uh, talk about, or let's kind of see what she says here. At least three and a half million people who would lose their jobs. So, Chair Powell, if you reach your goal and two million people get laid off by the end of this year, and then, just like in 11 out of 12 times that unemployment has risen by a point in a single year, it keeps on rising, and then we've got two and a half million people out of work, We've got three million people who get laid off. We've got three and a half million people who get laid off. What's your plan? Okay, so just real quick, uh, just a little bit of context. So what um, Elizabeth Warren is alluding to is, number one, uh, she is basically accusing uh, Jerome Powell of bringing up unemployment and sending two to three million people out of jobs. And she's blaming him for this, right? Okay, so a couple of things. The job of the Fed is uh, to maintain price stability. Okay, they are not a they are a nonpartisan um, entity of the government. Their main job is to keep prices as stable as possible in our economy and to bring stability. They are not in the business of any social programs, or uh, they are not politically airing one way or another. Um, uh, they try to steer clear of any uh, side, uh, any like party politics. They are pretty much an independent entity, or at least they're supposed to be. And so what Elizabeth Warren is accusing Jerome Powell of doing is because he's raising interest rates, he is, and I mean him, the, the whole Fed is because they're doing that, they're going to send a bunch of people out of jobs. Now, the reason why, first off, the reason why the Fed is raising interest rates is because we have a we have had a pretty much a massive inflationary environment. Okay, um, prices have gone up, uh, things are way more expensive, and so he has to raise interest rates, or the Fed does. Uh, the Fed uses a few tools to keep prices stable. They use the reserve requirement. They use the federal funds rate, and they use uh, the buying and selling of government bonds. Now, if you don't know what they are, it doesn't matter. Interest rates is what matters. Now, the reason why they have to increase interest rates is because when they do that, businesses are going to be uh, de-incentivized or decentivized or less inclined to borrow money to invest in their own businesses. Uh, so, in effect, when uh, producers and businesses do not have capital to invest in their own companies, uh, they will not be able to hire people. And so, um, and when you're in that environment, what ends up happening is they have to cut costs. And one of the ways they do cut costs is they get rid of, um, 
they get rid of their inputs. And mainly uh, the factors of production, one of those things that they get rid of is they get rid of labor. And so uh, she is upset about that and she's accusing Jerome Powell of doing that. But here's the thing. Unfortunately, part of the process of uh, maintaining price stability is that there are consequences to decisions that are not going to be super popular. And so she's really upset about it. And that's why she's kind of, um, you know, really leaning into him right here. Well, right now, the unemployment rate is 3.4%, which is the lowest in 54 years. And we actually don't think that we need to see a sharp or enormous increase in unemployment to get inflation under control. I, I'm looking at your projections. Do you call two mil, laying off two million people this year not a sharp increase in unemployment? I would say four and a half Explain percent. that to the two million families who are going to be out of work. We're not again. We're not targeting any of that. We're, but I would say even four and a half percent unemployment is is well better than than most of the time for the last you know 75 years. In other words, you don't have a plan to stop a runaway train if it occurs. You know, Chair Powell, you are gambling with people's lives, and there's a pile of data showing the price gouging and supply chain kinks and the war in Ukraine are driving up prices. You cling to the idea that there's only one solution, lay off millions of workers. We need a Fed that will fight for families, and if you're not going to lead that charge, we need someone at the Fed who will. All right. So she leans in pretty hard with him, and you know... Um, honestly, I, in my opinion, she gaslights the guy pretty bad, um, manipulates the situation pretty bad and blames him, essentially blames him for everything. Okay. Now, is he to blame? No. His job is to maintain price stability in our economy. And an, and an unfortunate consequence of trying to maintain price stability is that, uh, you have negative externalities, which is unemployment right so when you raise rates trying to maintain stability what ends up happening is um, you're going to raise the unemployment rate now uh, the unemployment rate currently is at 3.4 percent which is crazy all right we are doing really really well a lot of people are working we're doing really really well now here's the thing though um, a lot of people are not talking about this but when you have uh, an unemployment rate that is that low, people are working. And when they're working, they're making money. And when they're making money, they are spending it. And if they're going to spend that money, uh, that's going to incentivize the sellers and the producers to raise uh, the prices of items to maximize their profits. And so um, it's not entirely uh, – It's well, number one, it's, it's, not, it's not his fault, man. <laughs> so – Okay, maybe. Uh, he did. Uh, he. I mean, we've been living in a zero interest rate environment for a very long time. And then, you know, when COVID had exacerbated the situation in the last three years, combined with, um, you know, supply chain bottlenecks, high oil prices because of the war, uh, it's made input prices. When I say input prices, things, ingredients that go into the making of uh, the items that we use, right, are uh, whatever it is that we consume, durable and non-durable goods. And when I say durable goods, I mean things that last for a long time, like refrigerators, microwaves, and non-durable goods. I'm talking about food and clothes and things like that, right? And all those ingredients go into the making of those items. And if those ingredients are more expensive, then sellers have to push the cost to the consumer. And so... Uh, you have that and you also have people who are making money and have jobs. It raises the prices of items, right? That's just uh, unfortunately a consequence of it. Now, when you have an unemployment rate of 3.4%, we're doing pretty well, okay? Um, and so the other thing I also want to show you is this thing. Oops. This right here. This is the business cycle, Okay. The business cycle is um, literally the, like it shows the cyclical nature of our uh, of our economy, the ups and downs and ebbs and flow of our economy. It really pretty much is like life, man. You have your highs and you have your lows, right? And for a prolonged amount of time, we've been in an expansionary period. In other words, productivity's been up, unemployment's been down, people are making money, we've been spending money, GDP's been going up. And the thing is, 
uh, expansionary is great, right? But it's not sustainable for a prolonged amount of time. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is usually the Fed will come in to steer <laughs> the party uh, and like slow it down a little bit, right? So usually when everybody's happy, everybody's making money and we're having a party, uh, basically it's the job of the Fed to take the, 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 the punch bowl away. Uh, to slow it down a little bit to obviously, you know, uh, not to create like disorder, right? Now, uh, and then what ends up happening is what they do is when we're in expansionary period, they have to not necessarily have to, but they do increase interest rates to bring inflation down, to slow the economy down. And then uh, it starts to contract and then we go back down a, a valley. And I think that's where we're at right now. We're, we're kind of heading down a valley. Uh, but nobody knows if we're in the valley or we're going to the valley or, you know, are we going to make our way up? No one really knows. Okay. Uh, but I will say that uh, the data is constantly changing. And if anybody tells you that we're going to go here or there, um, I'll be honest with you. Cool. I just I don't know. All right. Because uh, I think the data is constantly changing. I don't think we've ever personally, I don't think anybody uh, has really experienced an environment like this where you have massive inflation, but at the same time, you also have uh, a combination of supply bottleneck issues, a war that's going on, and then you also have um, the unemployment rate down, right? Um, you have um, you have GDP growth growing really just marginally. Um, you have uh, earning earnings compression, right? Um, all of these things are simultaneously happening at the same time. And uh, if somebody tells you that they know the trajectory, great, good for them. I just, I, I don't know. And the reason why I don't know is because I think the data is constantly changing. And I think the Fed is trying to react to that. And so number one, it's not Powell's fault, man. <laughs> I know everybody's like blaming him for the recession, but here's the thing. Uh, part of his job is, again, to maintain price stability. You know what would be even worse is if, let's say, hey, we bring unemployment down to 2%, which sounds great, but the problem is now you have inflation out of control. So everybody makes money. Everybody is making money, right? Let's say that happens. Uh, what if the money that you make, you can't afford anything because everything is four or five times more than uh, more expensive than it used to be? You know, it's just, that's just not what you want. And so um, whether or not we want to admit it or not, like what's the lesser of two evils, right? So we need to bring unemployment up maybe a couple of percentage points and then we might need to, um, you know, in order for us to bring inflation down or... If we bring inflation, if we don't do anything about inflation, then that's going to kill our purchasing power. And that is absolutely terrible. And we don't want that. Okay. And so uh, on a technical scale, um, if you want to just look at the charts, this is the uh, SPX or the S&P 500. Okay. We are currently at, this is the 200 right here. Okay. The 200 is uh, sitting at... 39.40, or sorry, 39.40.85, okay? Uh, and it's been a very strong support system or a support for the, the S&P 500 for the last, um, I would say, let's see, since uh, January 23rd, right? And we've been popping off of that. Uh, we kind of dipped down uh, last week and then it just popped right up. Now, are we in a bull market, bear market? I have no idea. I will say that the downtrend bear market uh, trend line has been broken. Uh, we're also underneath the uptrend of a possible uh, bull trend market too. So we're somewhere in the middle. We're in purgatory. Um, I will say that um, a good risk to reward trade would be to, if you want to go long, I would wait for uh, the indexes to go down to here, the 200, and then you can go long. All right. If you want to go short, I would wait until it completely breaks, okay? Um, so with that being said, uh, I don't know where we're going. I honestly don't know where we're going. I think that uh, we're just gonna see um, how the market uh, reveals itself, and I would stay nimble. Cash is a legitimate uh, position, all right? If you wanna, you wanna keep cash, that's cool. I would, I would wait. I will wait till next week till we get a clear trajectory of the markets, okay? I hope this helps, um, and if you have any questions, put them down in the chat or put them down in the comments. Um, and, uh, hopefully, yeah, uh, we could, uh, get some clear movement in the markets here. Okay. 
uh, in the meantime, stay safe out there. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any things that you guys are trading, put them in the comments. All right. Okay. I'll see you guys later.